Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832 Happy Saturday, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Society Now. It's a special day, though, because we usually tape on Mondays, Kaylin. We do. We do. But listen, when you call the heavy hitters in... (laughs) You got to adjust your schedule. I Not mean, your schedule, your schedule. Y'all know it's all things happening today because we didn't have a royal wedding in the past 24 hours. Things are happening. Society is changing every day. Our communities are changing. The world is changing. And, you know, we endeavor to bring you riveting content that excites, inspires, and invokes. So remember, my name is Kira Laws. You can follow me on Instagram at the modern day Cindy. That's Cindy with the I and not a Y. And my handsome co-host. You know what it is. It's your man, Kaylin Laws. Do me a quick, quick, quick favor, okay? I say this every time, and I don't think you understand how important it is. I need you to minimize your screen or go to your phone or whatever it is that you do. And go to Instagram and follow me at Senor Wapo seven one three. That's S E N O R G U A P O seven one three. Shout out Houston Rockets. We got to bring it home. That's what the seven one three is for. Seven one three. But are you the same on all your networks? I'm, a, your- I'm the same on all social media outlets. The website is Wapo seven one three dot com. Uh, Twitter, the Twitter, the Facebook, twi- the Twitter. all of it. How about your man? And as I said earlier, Kiro, you know, when you when you call the Giants in, oh my you know, you make a call for the Giants, you, you got to make room for schedule. the Giants, right? You, know, you just can't do stuff on regular work days, like Monday through Friday from 8 to What's 5. What's the Because the Giants don't exist in the that's regular what I, That's sphere. what I'm saying, because the sphere that we operate you know in is very fluid. And this is what's happening today on a Saturday. This is what's happening today on Happy Saturday. Saturday, everybody. We have Crystal Larice in the building, y'all. What up, Crystal? Crystal, what's hello, going on? Hello. How are you? Oh, y'all are so sweet. <laughs> Listen, we just we just we just tell it like it is, like it like my mother said, like a TIE is. I feel you. I you know what I'm saying? Always. Old school. So appreciate you coming 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 down and hanging with us all the way from sure. Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. ATL, stand up. ATL, we shout it. No doubt. So how you been? How was your flight? Um, my flight, okay. Uh-oh. This is crazy. Talk to him. <laughs> so we get to the airport. I'm on time. I'm two hours early. And it's time to board, and they delay the flight an hour. Why? Fuel leakage. So, oh, no. <laughs> so, no. No devil. Fuel so leakage. I'm actually, um, it was a very long day yesterday. Yeah. But I'm grateful that they caught it. And we were Facts able to before get, you got in the air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's me and my son traveling. So I'm always like, please, Lord, just protect us. However, I'll wait. You know, wait. you know, mommyhood looks good on you. Thank you. It does. Mommyhood suits you. It looks good on you, man. Hey, I ain't the only one. Well, now, you, know, you know, the missus is definitely rocking it. <laughs> you know, my baby does her thing. You know, she. <laughs> She she does she does her thing. And, and, you trying and to get back to what I was, girl? Please. <laughs> last year around this time, but I'm getting there though. Thank God. Yeah, I didn't look. Oh, you know, I, you didn't, I didn't look like this three weeks ago. Bless God yeah. for yeah. for just meta, modern. You know, medicine. you know what's amazing to me is how the, God made y'all. 
Because let me tell you, I haven't done anything, and my body is doing some things that I didn't think it was going to do three weeks ago. Because I was like, Lord, I don't think, I don't know. Yeah. And that snap coming back. Man, I was like, Jesus, help. <laughs> That's all I you I was need. so scared. That's all I was, you I was, need, I looked in that mirror. I said, Caitlin, mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. It, but, but, I, said, I don't know but, if I can do this. But again, it's, you know, it's amazing. Like, you guys were, that's one of the reasons why you were created is to, is to birth greatness into this world, birth children. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the fact that just to see the whole process, man, up front. Look at you giving this Mother's Day message post Mother's Day. No, no, no. It's, I mean, you know, <laughs> but I think every day is Mother's thank Day, you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Know, I'm, know, I'm, I'm, I with, know. I'm with phenomenal women. I got to c- celebrate, you know, the phenomenality. Is that even a word? Yeah. We made it one today. We made it one today, huh? Today, a, you heard it first one. on Society Now. Phenomenality. Don't ask me how to spell it, but we're going <laughs> to say it. Yeah, I care with them boys. Yeah, huh? I had a boy, and yeah. I know exactly how she feel. Hmm? It yeah. took me a minute. They do something different. They to do your something body. totally different to Because when I had Eden, my body was like, bam, bam, didn't have a baby. Mm-hmm. Next day, this was bam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is happening, Lord? What is happening? Yeah, I still but I'm here. struggle. Yeah, I, but it's okay, though, because I, like I said, had it. Listen, three weeks ago, I was a, it was a sad situation. <laughs> But today I feel a little bit better we about myself. About today. We, about we all today. about today. We, we all about, today. about we Crystal look, Middlebrook. We're gonna look for it. Don't do the. Don't be all about me. Yeah, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, Crystal Larise, Crystal Middlebrook. So, so let's jump this thing off. Let's just let's just let's do like Trey songs and say it dive in. All right. Okay. But not like that to kind of dive. I know. Um. <laughs> so who is Crystal Middlebrook? Well, um, it's two of me. Uh-oh. You know. You bipolar. You saw Sophia and Beyonce. No, this. Crystal Middlebrook <laughs> is um. No wait, <laughs> two of them. It's two of me. <laughs> it's Crystal Middlebrook is my um it's my government. my government your government name. Um, and Crystal Larice is uh the entrepreneur by by God's will. Amen. And um mother by God's will, and um just creative man. I'm. Always changing. Yeah. Always changing. Yeah. 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 I, I I think that's necessary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To be fluid, to be creative, especially in, in, in this current landscape, current society. It's it's uh it to be stoic and to be monolithic is to be in the past. And to get left behind. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I keep hearing that word monolithic. What? I feel well, like it's the our, our word of the day. Well, I mean, it's, it's a it's a buzzword it's right like now. It's, it is a buzzword. Yeah, especially, especially with the creative you know, a revolution coming up. Yes. You know, it's a buzzword because people try you know, we're the older millennial ex lineals is what this literature is saying. Can now. you can you break that down for me? Because my grandmother not my grandmother who's eighty four. Yeah, who, who's who's hundred percent of boomer. <laughs> A hundred percent. So, so in her mind, you, you're a millennial. Well, we just had this conversation, and she was debating with me about whether I was a millennial. You're not a millennial. You're not. Technically, so, you're not. So, in the, in the classes that I've been teaching or whatever, we talked about this gap, and we're part of this gap um, of persons like we're not quite we're not quite millennials, and we're not boomers. So, this recent article I think was brought out by the Harvest Business Review, and also New York Times talks about we're ex millennials because we're in the middle. We're not quite millennial because we don't qualify because we're actually we're we are we can relate to when there was no technology mm-hmm. and when there the are current, the, the current, current. Technology. that makes sense so yeah. we're right there in the middle we can bridge the gap between we're the we're the gap bridges yeah. we bridge the gap so. between what our grandparents and our parents know and mm-hmm. what this generation behind us can't really conceptualize they don't know anything about you know they don't know about life before Yes, they they yes. grew up with not technology. They grew up with the internet. We didn't grow up with the internet. We grew up with wishing the internet was not. Yeah, we didn't get the internet until we, we, became, we, we came like, of age. We were in high school. We were in high yeah. school when uh-huh. we had yeah. the CD-ROMs, the AOL. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and it was sending them in the mail. It's what it is. Sending them in the mail. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I got another thousand hours. We only had five hours. I'm just being real. I mean, we know what it was before when we were wishing for cell phones. We were wishing for FaceTime. We were like, can you imagine one day we're gonna be the Jetsons to us? Yeah, we were like, we one day we're gonna. We never flew though. Right. We never flew like the Jetsons. It's so we... funny because me and my cousin were just talking about mm-hmm. um, the Jetsons and how we can't wait till the Jetson cars come out when we it's were in Houston the... traffic right. yesterday. She's <laughs> like, I cannot <laughs> wait till I can. Take we gotta them talk off. to Richard Branson because he's the person with the technology. <laughs> Him and, and uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it's it's important, like I was saying, but, you know, because of the generation that we're in, that you that you become that you're not monolithic. You're not one sided. You're not one person, right? Yeah. Um, we understand. And it's a very nuanced conversation, but we understand how we, we got the game and we understand the benefit of how our parents did it. The boomers, the baby boomers, how Generation X, who, who would be like our older brothers and sisters, so to speak, born mm-hmm. in the 60s and 70s. Um, um, we understand how they did it, but it's not 
so we get why and how, but it's not really who we are. Who we have, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I understand being somewhere t- for 25 years at one but job. That, but we understand that you don't have to be. Yeah, but, but, I, but yeah. I don't. I understand it, but I don't understand it. We it, understand it. You know <laughs> we we understand the work ethic because we know they were working Facts. towards something. It was stability and for them. And that's the thing that's and, difference between us mm-hmm. and millennials yeah. is the work ethic. I, I'm always saying that everyone's so quick to get somewhere and they don't want to work for it yeah so they don't want to let people see the work they're doing mm-hmm. they just want you to see the good stuff right. mm-hmm. on the other side and it's I a lot think of it's, grind it's, but it's so much beauty in the grind oh absolutely that millennials miss i mean i mean you know you look, you look at what you look at puff what, what he went through five hours from, to, yeah. from new york to dc for free Every day. Every day. Mm-hmm. Just for an internship. Just for an internship. And people don't understand conceptually what that really means. It's like when I think about when you talk about the Beyonce's of the world running in the park in the morning to sing. You know what right. I mean? Like people mm-hmm. don't think about that. Like you train yourself for what you want. Right. Th- this is the reason why you're able to get paid what you get paid because you trained early. You trained early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a difference. It's definitely a difference. Grind is, you can't I'm glad skip the I broke that down for me. Yeah. yeah so, so technically we're excellent. <laughs> we're excellent. We're excellent. We're excellent. We're excellent. We're not quite I'm Xers. Generation X, we're not quite millennials. Gotcha. So we're the last. I was telling my mother, I said, you know, I, I feel like we're the la- we're, we're the bridging of the gap. We're the last generation of a dying uh, uh, thing. Uh, uh, to, because we, it's on us to, to impart teach them absolutely the next the game, phase, the game that we got and the foundation that we got from the boomers and Generation X, but also to remain creative and remain innovative and remain, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and non-judgmental. Pro- non-judgmental. I wish they would they would receive it though. I think but they, they will. will you know, if it's we, we, right. we didn't receive it though either. Exactly. What it took 20 us a year, minute 18, to receive 19, 17 a lot of stuff. Old. It took us a minute, but yeah. then I think also was the way it was produced or, or communicated because you think our parents or our grandparents and those persons in that generation they they grew up with uh, a grind, but they also grew maybe a little bit harder. And so they sometimes did. when it was packaged, it was packaged so so much like you need to do. Um, it was no a room. duty. It was a duty. It was no room for you to be whoever you felt like you were being called mm-hmm. to be. There was no room for that. It's like, no, this is what you do if you want to get ahead. Like, right. no, not really. There is an in-between there. There is something there that maybe if I partner this with something I actually love, then, then we'll see more fruit and not just work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think that that was the difference because our... I think our our four parents were just very much so you have to you have to you have to and it was no room for exploratory things. You you make me think of a conversation I had with my father. He's sixty five. Mm-hmm. I believe my dad's sixty five. Um, he said that to me early on in my when I walked away from wanting to go to law school and I was like I just want to do me mm-hmm. and I don't know what that is but I want to do me. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was like you know you have that. You have that uh, that um, that availability for you to do that. Right. You know he doesn't get it, but he supports it right. because he's like, I wish I knew I could do all those things. I didn't know I could. That's so good that it, he was it, able it, to say that because a lot of parents can't say I, that. A lot of parents don't want to admit it. It's oh. different with my mother. She won't really admit, you mm. know. But my dad was like, it's some things I just couldn't. I didn't. It wasn't even a thought. Mm-hmm. You just you did, you did what it you were supposed to do. It wasn't even something that he thought he could do, right? You know, so it's it's yeah. awesome. I it, think that's, it is. I think that's one of the things that we talk about a lot because I'm like for my for me my mom or my you know my mom, um, I see that she's more now coming around now. She's 68. Mm-hmm. She's coming around now, but it's because of she sees the fruit on the back end. Like for for her to she never negative negatively commented on it per se. She will ask a why, but her why is always like why are you doing that. But it came from, I'm like, well, I'm not going to answer that question because I feel like it's it's got a lot in, in that. But her, now she's like, oh, I understand it, but it's still, I think there's some things that just don't connect, mm-hmm. right? It just doesn't connect, but it's good that you had a parent that was supportive yeah, early on. That's yeah, really yeah, good. you know, um, uh, one of the reasons that, you know, they were, they were so, uh, they being our, our parents were so uh, hell-bent, so to speak, on making sure or doing the things that they that they needed because they didn't come up with anything, right? Yeah. You know, they, they really saw abject poverty. I mean, my my parents were from, they from the hood. You know, yeah. my oh yeah, yeah. My, my your you know, parents are from Memphis too. Yeah, from Memphis. Yeah, yeah my yeah, dad yeah. is from Stanton, which oh, is yeah. even uh-huh. like yeah, uh-huh. yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. The the countryhood, the hood, the country hood, <laughs> <for> <laughs> sure. country hood, your hood, hood. My mother was from the projects, the of projects Bronx, New York, Bronx, Boogie New York. Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My dad so, too. So. so they didn't see anything, and so when they get, mm-hmm. so they found out a way to, to to become financially sound and financially stable. They wanted to impart the way that they did it to us, right? Mm. And, and then there's a but, but there's another step that we can take, and we have some people uh, that support this show that will show you how 
to uh, become financially secure. And this portion of the show is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. Love them. Did you know that only four states in the U.S. offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they do not have enough savings. Please, 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 please do not become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your, your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance at one 844 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary, that means free, financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. Got to keep your coin right. Got to. Got to keep your coin right. And I think that's what our parents were trying to do. They trying to just, I mean, because they, mm-hmm. like, they were able to do a lot of things we just did not. We, we probably could say it was taken to t- we took advantage of yeah. because we just we grew that, up that, in I mean, it. that was the way we grew, we grew up, up. In stability yeah. right you know and they were trying to achieve stability so it's it's a different different thought process completely so crystal for you as a creative entrepreneur because that's what we consider you very creative entrepreneur what are some of the three lessons you've learned on your journey like three you, three like lessons. give us three you can yeah. give us five but I three know. we gave you three yeah, i know it's been five years i've been in this um freely um has it been that long? It, it, yeah, because Cohort Fash is when I, it's really probably been about, the first creative thought came over a decade ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I acted on it maybe six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, um, I, I've learned so much, I want to say, in the last, since having my son, it's been a reflection period. So yeah. the last two years is when I really started to recognize these things that I've learned along the way. Right. Um, one, I cannot be ashamed of my failures and mistakes. I considered them failures when I was like first starting, but they were they were seriously just. I was actually I wasn't failing. I was winning. Mm-hmm. I was definitely winning, and I didn't realize it. Um, I think a lot of people we get into creative entrepreneurs. We have this idea of perfection. Right. And that can kind of hang us up. It hung me up so much. And I mean, Kayla, you and Kira have been on the front line with me. So y'all know I am I was very doubtful of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but with my son, I've learned that taking it slow is okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't have to be like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Kayla worked on our Instagram yeah. for Cohart Fash. And... It was probably the hardest for me because I just wanted those 20 plus 20,000 followers, you know, and a lot of millennials and creative entrepreneurs that are in our age, ex millennials yeah. and millennials. That's what we focus on our likes, mm. those things. And um, as a creative entrepreneur, I felt I've learned that it's OK to be have that freedom to be like, I'm good. Yeah, I got my little 80, my little 800 people. I'm going to let them come organically. Uh huh. I love organic um, love, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. It's real. It's, it's I not love superfluous. Organic love. Yeah. I don't. It's hard for me to get into new things because I feel like I don't trust it, and that's kind of weird sometimes. Wow. Okay. I don't trust the new stuff because I feel like every no one's showing their real self sometimes, and it's a little, it's a bit frustrating. That's why I love y'all because y'all have always been so mm-hmm. real and and open with me. Um, but that is one thing, mm-hmm. one thing. And thank God for Kevin, because Kevin taught me all of that. Yeah. Um, also, I'm learning to let go. <laughs> let go and make room for other dreams to flourish. God, that is so hard. Yeah. Especially when something is your baby or something, whether yeah. it's a friend, whether it's a relationship. like Whether that, it's that, a season. And yeah, I think people yeah. forget that. That mm-hmm. sometimes letting go is a season. Come on, season. Crystal. Come on, Crystal. You know, letting go is a season sometime. You may even revisit that season where you may reap something in it Mm -hmm. instead of having to let something go. But you have to have seasons of letting go. Yeah. God always brings stuff right back around to you. Mm -hmm. He just needs you to let it go and mature somewhere. I mean, even when you think about the word season. Spring is only for a short amount of time, yeah. but it always comes back around. People aren't nine months with later. This. I'm never yeah. comfortable with seasons. Yeah. I'm gonna be real. That's with hard. You. Yeah, 
<laughs> One of my favorite books is Job. And I remember the first time I read it, I said, Lord, I'm listening. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is going to be hard. It's going to be tough, man. It's, <laughs> it's going to be, be tough. Hard. I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You know, su- sub- subscribing to such a such a strong book but seasons is is, is something it's that natural yeah it's natural um uh and, and and that's really 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 dope and we want to talk to our facebook live family real quick and ask that you subscribe to our show on all the major platforms including itunes soundcloud google play and stitcher review our show and itunes with constructive feedback and share this facebook live post in the entire show with your family and your friends and also donate to the to the to our that do this again donate to to our (laughs) mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week you can donate at www.thesphere.tv forward slash donate um and so you you said you said letting go was your second yeah uh, letting uh, go was my second for sure um I'm in a season right now of letting go mm-hmm. and and repurposing and all of that and figuring out what it is I really want because now my purpose is different with a kid, you know, and my family comes first. Um, the third thing, wow, I thought I would be easy to say these because I've had so many lessons. Um Your heart never lies. Oh, love it. Your heart isn't never that a, lies. Isn't that a gamble? Because your heart, that heart head thing, that relationship sometimes is so tumultuous it's and difficult. so contentious. Contentious, yeah, for sure. Because you don't want to be emotional. I'm not saying not be don't not to be logic. I'm a logical thinker. Mm. You know, when it comes to business, I'm definitely like, okay, these are the things that need to happen. I'm very strategic. Right. Um, but just not. Not being af- not being afraid of the emotions when it comes to your business and mm-hmm. how your heart feels. Um, your ego can sometimes be the brain part right. telling you one thing, but you really have to trust your heart. You don't have to trust everybody else's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But your heart you need to trust as, as a creative. Um, I've had the blessing of part of Kohar Fash, we have the collective, which you're very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um and my mission with that was just to interview other creative entrepreneurs because I'm like, I know I can learn something from somebody else in just a conversation. And right. my conversations are short, but I get the deepest stuff out of people with some right. of those. Um, but every single one of them is because they follow, they trusted their heart. They've been successful because they trusted their heart. They stayed true to what their heart told them they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, don't make the decisions with your heart all right. the time. <laughs> right. But definitely trust your heart. Trust your heart. Yeah, trust yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's going to lead you. Because your heart is your instinct, right? Yes. It's, it's yes. your instinct. You know, people talk about, how, you know, your gut. Follow your gut. And um, I forgot who we were talking to, but they said they had, they had a great uh, acronym for gut. G-U-T, God Under Tummy. Oh, I love that. That's what gut. Well, follow your gut. Follow follow the God under your tummy. Hey, ain't that dope? I'm gonna get a t shirt. <laughs> yeah. Who got the t shirts? <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I don't remember who who it was that told us that, but but I tell I tell you, uh, uh, God under tummy. Um, so so you know we talked about those three lessons, and those mm-hmm. are, those are, those are powerful. Those are phenomenal, and I know you could potentially write a book. About those you lessons. Stop, okay? Um, Don't have me it, adding it, something it, else to my list. So, listen, why not? <laughs> listen, we, this is what we do, right? Yeah. Once, once, the, once, the, and that's the thing I love about being uh, around creatives and entrepreneurs. It just flows. Mm-hmm. It just, it just, the ideas just flow and flow and flow. You leave a conversation like, "Yo, I'm full, but now I got 45 other things to do." You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> like, oh, they just laid that down for yeah. me, and now I got to do now that. Gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, it, but, 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 give us the best part. And I'm really put you on the spot for this. The okay. best part about being an entrepreneur, the ultimate best part, because I know for why you're thinking. I know for me, mm-hmm. what it is. Y'all trying it today? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know. I know. <laughs> no, it's just you know we just because yeah, I did because, say I was up watching the wedding. Yeah, morning, I know. Right? You did say you was up watching the wedding, and we and we gonna lean on you for that in a minute. But but I know one of the best parts for me about being an entrepreneur is the create is is the complete creative control on the business side as well as the creative side. It's it's seeing a vision that I have or a thought that I have come to fruition is you know I'm not a mother I'm a parent mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's me giving birth to something you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying and so for me 
That's the big. That's the best part. Whether it whether, part. whether it succeeds or fails, just okay. It came to light. Yeah. For, me, for Kayla, you know what I'm saying. Let me see the best part. Dun, dun, dun. It's that rush. Yeah. That rush. Once the rush is gone, y'all lost me. <laughs> I hear you. Once that rush is gone, and I have to recreate the rush, and that's fun. I love to recreate the rush. You know who was dope at doing that? You know who's dope at recreating the rush, recreating themselves? Mm-hmm. Who's like the best editor to me? Madonna. Yeah. <clears throat> the material girl. <laughs> Look, I had to stop. I'm the, I'm gonna tell you why. You? Ma- Ma- Madonna, <laughs> it, Madonna has just now become irrelevant, and she's like 112. She, she might, like, be, she might be 212 though. Like, yeah, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. But she, she just now. That if you think about it, every era. She's not irrelevant though. She's really not. I know. I just said that for she's a fact. She's not. She's really not. She, you know, every era she has redefined herself. She has, she has done something. You know, within music to, uh, to really, uh, stay relevant, man, and, and, and to keep. The freshness to keep. Well, okay. Mm, wait. Maybe she, just, it's the tactic she use sometimes. That uh, I, have I mean, facts, facts. <laughs> to make herself somewhat facts. relevant. Um, but I feel you. Yeah, I do. I do feel you. I I do get that. Uh, yeah, um, man. but for me, I think it might be the younger. Even though she's not much younger, is um, I've been really proud of Rihanna. Oh come on, man. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only proud. I've been very proud of her. Mm-hmm. Cause I I'm gonna tell you she wasn't one of my favorites. No, she was nobody. I never saw her coming this like. This. I don't think any of us did. I actually thought she would. Really? Cause you know I, I always go for the underdog. So I always thought that Rihanna had something interesting about her because because the way yeah. she was picked. If all the people that could have come through Def Jam, she was picked as a rising star. Like you know you think about stuff like that. Like what made her different? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but, but I, I'm talking I mean, about to the level where. Yeah. Saying, yeah. Saying, I'm saying, what I'm saying like going from. Have, Upon the replay to to this chick, I think she always I, had, I just but I think see she it. always had it because I feel I just like see it. I feel like her island grind. She came up, she came up in a place of yeah. a struggle too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, yeah. But she was always people looked at her as a natural beauty. So I think she was able to maneuver through like, okay, what opportunities should yeah. I really jump on? And when she did it, she put her business acumen to mind because I think you know. Not too many people been able to master or maximize. I'm saying master, mm. maximize a, a makeup deal like that. Right. You know, she saw something that some somebody she got the right advisors, the right something. She saw something that she was like, let me let me roll this thing out. Even yeah. like rolling with it. Like, what are the thing? What are the areas that people don't always? Yeah, you know, yeah, the, you know, those areas that people don't always uh, uh, really kind of go with. You know, I and, and that's a, that's a that's a fantastic point uh, with Rihanna. Um, she and I think it's just because. Like I said, I didn't. I agree. I'm with you. I ain't see it. I just didn't. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen <laughs> going from pun to replay with them braids. While I, meanwhile, while I got my Fenty foundation on today. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> me, me, no, I don't have. Neither. No, it's okay. Yeah. But I mean, but even as I see her just progressing, and she's she's putting herself in the right position. Mm-hmm. And she, the one thing I will say that I'm learning, and I'm she younger than us. Yeah. Not by much, but she is. But what I have started to appreciate in her is she's still quiet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, she's not boastful about anything until right. it's there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't know. One, I didn't know she had the lingerie line coming out till the day before, a couple of days before. Mm-hmm. I said, excuse me, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, she's got all of these new things. And, I mean, I, I, my hat off, my hat's off to you. Yeah, you know, uh, absolutely. That's uh, that's uh, I, I agree. Uh, Rihanna does her thing. Next question. Let's move yes. forward. You ready? I'm ready. So, and this is something that is really near and dear to care to our, to our heart. What has been your experience? And we didn't get, we didn't prep you on purpose. We Obviously, wanted, we, I'm we, like, we, we wait a minute. We wanted to be organic. Look, we man, want, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. No one's asked me anything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what are your what are you, what what has been your experience? Uh, dating and doing business with a fellow creative. Jeez, I'll put him out there too. Yeah. <laughs> because because we have the same, you know, because Well, you know what? This is, let's let's reword the question. Okay. What has been your experience with just meeting creative persons that share your same energy and vibe? Because I think as a creative, as a woman, there's always that I feel like personally I feel like you always have to balance the femininity the the i don't want to say femininity but you have to balance the power 
Mm -hmm. in relationships. Have you had to encounter that, like balancing the power as a creative individual? And how does that work for you when, when you're considering and or dating someone who might be equally as creative and or, you know, just. Not. OK, that's you may y'all did put me on the spot. Well, I know y'all family, so I'm going to let that ride today. <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to ask it differently. I didn't know he was going to jump out there like that. It's I was okay. like, no, no, it's OK. No, it's, it really is, because honestly, um, Cliff my soon to be spouse um he he is the reason why you guys look and see me like i am today mm -hmm. um i was i'm highly inspired by him um and his work ethic when it comes to being a creative i never um encountered anyone in a relationship like that who was creative oh um, wow okay yeah he's really like my first like oh okay like <laughs> this is real um so it's made me definitely more confident. It's definitely made me more confident in this role. Um, and it's made it easier for me to, to feel comfortable around other creatives because mm -hmm. for a while I was on a legal path mm -hmm. and that's a very different field. So cha, 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 I know, cha, Kira, cha, you know, that's how we connect. Cha, 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 cha. You know, that's how we connect it. And um, <laughs> um, so it was it was extremely hard for me um, to even enter a creative realm. And I was very nervous about it because I didn't know, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. And it was actually him when I published the first um, publication of CHF magazine. He was the one that was like, you got you got something, mm -hmm. you know, and I had never heard that before. Mm -hmm. And so it's been very easy for me mm -hmm. now where I feel comfortable to even encourage other creatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel very comfortable. Like, yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. It might take you a minute, but you, you got it. Mm -hmm. You'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's you may want to ask me the question again. Oh, no, no, like you're, I said, oh, no, that I was the perfect sleepy. answer. <laughs> no, 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 that was a good answer because I think that's what people need to hear. Like, you know, when you're meeting persons that, that you might share similar interests in, um, in terms of in even dating or, you know, relating or dating to someone opposite sex or otherwise, uh, I think the thing is, is you have to find something that, you know, makes you guys jive or connect. Mm -hmm. And for you, it's like, you know, him having the voice been like hey you can do certain things so that's something that we don't really hear enough of someone baby yeah. inspiring us in areas that we don't we're not already inspired right? right you want someone to be able to i guess pull you up and out and say hey you know this is something i see this in you and whether regardless of how the relationship evolves i feel like there has to be something more mm -hmm. they have to be able to bring something more and it's not always finances it's not always the job it's not always a lot of things that people put a lot of stock in sometimes it's the it's the intangibles that make the difference right and so a lot of times we just need to lean on that. And with that thought, like those things make me smile. I don't know about you guys. It makes me smile. Mm -hmm. So this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. Uh, Elite Dental Wellness, is our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. At Elite Dental Wellness... Um, is built on integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and a friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-786-8680. Again, the number is 713-789-8680. Again, 713-789-8680. Elite Dental Wellness. Get that smile together, Get people. Get that smile together. I mean, because we will go on a whole little rant about how dental yeah. health and hygiene is important. because it is important thing. I mean, we, we talk about this, but people don't realize how much your hygiene, your, 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 you know, your hygiene, your oral hygiene is connected to your heart. Mm -hmm. And people don't think about that, even connected to your brain. People don't think about that. Mm -hmm. and so it's not just about having the nice, perfect smile. It's also about having a clean mouth. And a healthy, a healthy mouth. A healthy right. mouth, mm -hmm. a very healthy mouth. And you have to take care of it. You know, sometimes we put too much stock into what it looks like versus what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so it's something to think about. Elite Dental Wellness, y'all. Mm -hmm. Get out there. 
So I have a question, yeah. um, and it should not throw you off. I, I hope don't, it won't. Y'all know I don't mind. I just beat me a hard time. <laughs> so on, so on the creative superhighway, what does that path look like? Because I feel like sometimes people think that when you travel that path, everything is very straight, <laughs> and the sounds <laughs> and the signs are always clear, right? So on your your on your superhighway, I mean, I, I I thought about it this morning. I was like, I know what her answer is going to be, but for me, I was like, I know the answer for me looks I'm about like to put a that on the shirt. Look like oh man, like like a Jumanji map, but yeah. you know, for you, what does it look like? Your creative superhighway, what does that look like for you? Yep, <laughs> and that's what it looks like for most creatives. You've seen it here first, people. That's the look. It's kind of like, what the? Today, and this is today. Not like yesterday, and um, it's not like the day before. Man. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. Did you want to answer? No, I mean, no, if you don't have one, because this is the thing. But your silence says it all. Because I think that's what people need to realize. I think sometimes talking about. You don't know. Ex-millennials, millennials, things like people get out there and they think it's so easy. Man, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I have fallen victim to trying to be like a millennial. Mm, Trying to get out there and just get. Man, I. They make it hard for ex <laughs> <laughs> They make it look so easy, and I have to remind myself: you ain't, you not do, you are not, not new to this, right? You're not wired you know like better. them. You're not new to this, and you're not them, right? Like, you know, so it's like you start, you start really, um, you really start dealing with. Man, that's the, the super highway. Y'all got y'all really do you okay, Kira. <laughs> um I thought it was a legit fair it is question. It's a legit fair question. I'm glad you all have at this actually like video. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because if I just went silent, everybody oh, like what, what is that white right. noise? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um it's there is no there's no sign. Mm-hmm. So like if I just met I'm a visual person too, so if I if I imagined it, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, usually on the highway, you have some signs. Mm-hmm. Mile yeah. markers. Rest area yeah, coming up uh-huh. here. Man. You got a little, you, you low on fuel, fill up here, sister. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I feel like she about to walk the, te- walk the text, <laughs> Crystal. You know, exit here for your next adventure. Okay. okay. You know, the theme park is at the, at the, the three miles down. Like, you kind of have those road map along the way, no matter what the curves are. Mm-hmm. No matter how straight the highway is, no matter what part of the terrain of the country you may in, you are going to have some kind of direction. As a creative, just imagine driving with no signs. Mm-hmm. It could be broad daylight and there's zero signs. You mm-hmm. know, the next stop is wherever you choose. You have to kind of feel your way through you that. You have thing. to feel it. It's not um, something that. And I guess I learned this recently, especially with trying to follow all of this stuff that we're bombarded with on on social media. Mm-hmm. That's why I take social media breaks because I start wanting to take these, you know, free mini classes to start your own yeah. courses. And yeah, I yeah. want to do this. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should roll out a program mm-hmm. like that. And I mean, it's it's not my creative highway. No. And so for me, it's like my mine is mine. Absolutely. I think that's the whole thing. I think it's figuring out, you know, the beat to your drum and like walking that way and not really paying attention. Like I tell people, I'm like, you know, stay in your lane and drive at your speed, like whatever that looks like for you. Because it, for a lot of people, you might, there's a lot of people that might be in your lane, but everyone's not going the same pace and everybody's not doing the same thing. People are, you know, all people are always going in and out the lanes. You think about that when you're traveling on the mm-hmm, highway. People, mm-hmm. are tra- everyone has a different destination. Like you said, the exits might be and different. And some people may not make it to their destination, and that's what people have to understand. That's good. Because when you look at, um, there's someone that I'm, I admire a lot in Atlanta, um, and he's, I've, I've had his his work or his story on Kohar Fash before. Um, but he recently made a post, and I and I'm going to talk about it because it's really relevant. Mm-hmm. So he he had just broke down how he shares so many of his successes. He is definitely a millennial, but he shares all of his successes. But there are so many things that people don't see, mm-hmm. um, and that's what I believe it make. That's the difference between us and millennials because I want you to see mm-hmm. when I make make a mistake. To make the gritty part. I want you to see it. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to see where I was like, I can't do this no more. I need a break. I'm going to get back with y'all. Like, a, If anybody go to Cold Heart Fashion, y'all read. 
it's at least 16 breaks. <laughs> 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 I got to regroup. God. I'm, I'm going to get back to y'all. But I always come back with something different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nothing wrong with celebrating your success. Mm-hmm. I rock that. But I get so much more out of people who share their like failures. Like, I love that. It's, it's like real it, life. It's real life. It's real life. Mm-hmm. It's real life, man. That creative super highway. I'm about to go draw that on my wall at home. Well, I, you know, <laughs> my, so, so what made me think about that is because I have actually been talking to Kaylin about something I'm trying to put together in this creative super highway. And I have like all these little lines. It looks like a little, my version of the Matrix slash, what's the show that I do love now? Um, the Upside Down. Uh, oh, Stranger, I have to Stranger watch. Things. Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. And they talk about this upside down place where it's, it's all these tunnels that have been carved out from this thing that's negative but again it's been carved out but it's happening all underground so all of this is happening underground but when you think about it as a creative you you go through like what you were saying a lot of different roles and especially if you're a transition because I believe creatives are persons that can operate in both areas they can operate in a very professional setting but they're choosing to follow that their passion part. That's choosing <laughs> right that part that that part because that it part. because you have to figure out how to make that work and not get frustrated in that process. Mm-hmm. Some people might just jump on out there and that creative and leave the other stuff behind, and you have to figure out what that looks like for you. And so the super highway is this place where you are able to get to your destination. You might reroute your tours a few times, or you might not ever get there because you've decided you made a decision. You know, I'm not going to do this. And that's okay, too. You just have to be okay with the decisions that come along with. No one's okay at first. No, no. No one's okay because you. You, Because it hurts. Because it's a hurt. Because I think every decision is an opportunity to either make you better, like a chipping. Right. It makes you a little like, okay, I'm I'm okay with letting this go. Or I'm okay with putting this down. Or I'm okay with not taking that exit right now. I think every decision you make on the super highway is an opportunity for you to develop internally. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's an opportunity for mm-hmm. you to be more, you know, for you to be strengthened in some form of, in a more confident way, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you think about I mean, that? I, I, mean, I agree. I agree. You, you know, uh, the thought with the analogy of the, of the super highway that I had was, um, you know, even though the highway has the same signs, everybody takes different routes. Mm-hmm. True. So you know what? Where you might exit uh, exit twelve, I might need to exit exit fourteen, and then U turn because my truck is too big; it can't fit. Right. It, it it can't fit down the ramp for exit exit twelve. And you yeah. have to be able to know on know your all car, that uh, on your highway. You got to know that the plan that works for you as well. But that only comes with skinny and knee. It only mm-hmm. comes with, with the with, hurt and the pain. With, with you know some successes, People many are failures. So afraid of that. The experience you get, the experience of hurt, like the experience of like I need to hurt. Like sometimes I need this cry is necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you buy a home, you know people people oftentimes want a home with character. That means a home that got some dings. Yeah. That means a home that has some some some, some imperfections. That means a home that that's not it's some, worn a little you know, bit. It's worn yeah. a little bit because you know that home is is broken in. It's that's sturdy. a great. It's, it's, that's a great it's example. Strong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's one of those things that I, I think that that's how we approach business. I want to know somebody who has been to the bottom and also been to the top. If you've never lost, once you lose, how are you going to handle it? Here's the thing. Everybody loses. I want to be connected to people that admit they lost mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're comfortable in it mm-hmm. because that's something that I run into a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I live in Atlanta, mm-hmm. a lot of creative entrepreneurs, Absolutely. a lot of entrepreneurs in it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the quotes. Um, <laughs> Technically they are. Technically they are. Okay. So, I'm just saying, they, 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 they got to get licenses <laughs> to work in these clubs and you know what I'm saying? Do they have a license? Yeah, they do. Wait, in Texas, you, uh, Texas is out of dance, okay. they have to have a license. I said... Do they? Do we have well, we seen them all? So no, <laughs> I'm about to go into my legal. Here, I'm, I'm going no, into I, my yeah, legal. No, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Look, we got these compliance officers right. in here. <laughs> but no, and I'm not knocking. I'm not yeah, knocking no, people sure. at all. It's just that what I've run into is um, be comfortable with sharing that you fail. You know, be comfortable that you may not have it figured out. Something that That's I okay. yeah, something that I it's a term that people use often, and I've been told this, and I don't like it, and I will probably have people listen to this and see me and be like, I don't know about her. Um, I don't like the fake it till you make it idea. I never have, and that may just be me, but I never have liked the fake it till you make it. I get it that you live the life that you see yourself reaching. 
but don't fake it to where you forget what who you are you know a lot of times it's imposters to me because i'm like hey did you really do that you know like have you really gotten there have you really did the work and a lot of people will make it seem like they did and then when you really do the research i'm a researcher man facts when facts. i do the research on you and i'm like oh, up. Right. <laughs> baby uh you know when yeah. i really do it i'm like i can't i can't rock with you right because at some point that mask has to come off and i would have rather known who that was underneath that mask from the get-go i could ride with you that way right. you know but faking it i'm not saying don't i'm not saying don't live um you know don't prepare yourself on that course i'm just saying i can't get with the fake it till you make it yeah yeah i can't get with that phrase well, you know <laughs> I, it's one of those things that, that the fake it until you make it it's uh it's uh people don't know how to people don't know how to um I, you know i don't i don't i don't even know Pe- people just are, are kind of unaware of the other side of the faking until you make it right um yeah i think i think that fake it till you make it i love the idea of I, I think what it was supposed to represent what it's really supposed to represent is be confident in what you're trying to do and walk in that but not necessarily don't be fr- like i feel don't like be don't be fraudulent yeah. because that that part of the fake it till you make it is, has led people astray because you start doing things you're not really equipped and to ready do. to do mm-hmm. like people are trying to i want to be this big time person so now you're you're overspending you're underdoing right. you know like all these things like you're putting out something that's not really you and that's when problems happen yeah you know broadcasting something that's not you that's right. not real it's yeah. not real but you don't have to be like that and you and especially if you have products and placement and things right. like that you really want to do and with that in mind think about it from this perspective our this portion of our show is sponsored by the sphere are you starting a business and looking for a place to advertise do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product if so get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at the sphere We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content, inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789, or send an email over to advertiseatthesphere.tv. Again, Email us at advertise at the sphere dot TV. Okay, so another another thing I want to think about is um, just from you on your entrepreneurial journey. I know there's a lot of things that you have tried to connect with, connect with, and one of the things I think is important is that um, as a creative, what are some of the things? My screen is moving. Okay, what are some of the things <laughs> that you thought has been, in, in, I guess, impressive maybe in the past 24 to 48 hours? Some impressive things that have happened in the past 24 to 48 hours. Aside from the history making things. Girl, you want me to talk about this wedding, though? His, history making <laughs> things. Um, well, we all know that um, Prince Harry married this morning. I was up at four. No, I'm sorry, 3.45 Central Standard Time to catch everything that had to do with that wedding. Um, so what was impressive, it's not just the way. Okay, first let me tell y'all, I'm obsessed with the royal family. So let's not, <laughs> I, I have no, I'm not ashamed. Hey, I understand. <laughs> I am obsessed with the royal family. Really? Yes. We did a whole history conversation last night about them, the entire line and lineage and generations, me and my two cousins. Um, but this wedding, I've never gotten up for their weddings. I definitely have done the DVR, catch them on the Instagram, right. you know, on the gram. Yeah. Sorry, there go my being an ex millennial, <laughs> catch them on Instagram. Um, but this morning it was different because people don't see what's happening. Mm-hmm. They don't see, not just in the British family, but. In the British royal family, but in fa- in the dynamic of the world, I don't think people really we get so over stimulated with negative everything, all of the hate, everything that's going on in the world that we don't see what's really happening in this world right. and how 
so much that had been broken over centuries and generations is now coming together. And I feel like this wedding symbolized so much. And it's not just because we got, you know, a, a sister in the, in the royal family. Yeah, which is dope. It's very dope. Um, it's, it's beyond that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you watch the service this morning, what I was impressed with was I always look at the people who are uncomfortable in situations. And it was really, really impressive to me to see how uncomfortable the old school royals were today. Um, Harry, hats off. You know, I'm not even going to lie. I'm one of those girls that thought I would marry Harry. <laughs> for, sh- for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> or William. I, I used to model, so it was like, one day I'm going right. to get over there and, and I'm going to get there. one yeah. of them. Uh-huh. We're going to change this thing like Diana wanted. Um, but... Um, I'm very proud of what I saw today. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing I saw in William and Kate's wedding. It was different. You started to see the shift with them, but he still kept it very traditional. Mm-hmm. Today, even just the way Harry was looking at Megan, I feel like that's how we all start. Like, love is starting to really take shape. People are starting to understand the definition of that. And that's impressive to me because, you know, we all need it. Yeah, absolutely. Hate is everywhere yeah yeah. you can't i have another reason why i gotta get off social media because i'm like i'm not gonna let all this hate plague me every single Mm. day i go from reading scripture in the morning first thing to start my day to oh i don't need to look at that on social media right so yeah it was very impressive for me to see just the dynamic and be a part of that piece of history um that i think is going to shape more than just the british royal family this is about to take y'all not y'all wasn't ready but if you watch it's, a, it's um in her own words if you watch i watched all of my netflix documentaries before this wedding came that i need to catch up on and diana did one <laughs> it's in her own words but literally at the end she said people don't and i'm not i'm just i'm i don't even i'm not saying it exactly but she basically said they're not they don't know what i'm doing right now but i do mm-hmm. i know the position i'm putting my sons in because i choose to raise them differently and I choose to, um, I'm, I'm raising them differently than what generations before have done. So everything that she said mm-hmm. in that documentary, everything that was so prophetic to me is to see it actually happening. Yeah. Like today, it's like, oh, okay. Right. You know, it, it, I, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Um, this was history making. And it was yeah, beyond just... I, I love the fact that it's a black woman in the royal family now. But oh, but, don't don't now yeah. let me say yes, Megan. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, girl. Yeah, no, 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 no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. But what I'm saying is, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, though. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because you, you you bring up a, a really good point about the old school folks being there, seeing the they changing were so of the guard. So uncomfortable, though. Yeah. If you haven't caught it. No, I, I want you to pay out. attention at, to certain key points. I understand. <laughs> I'm on vacation. So right. it was <laughs> it was at certain key points in that that you it was the shifting in the seat. Yeah. We don't know what to do right now. Mm-hmm. What is he saying? Is this how this is supposed to go? I mean, even up to the um leadership in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, is it Reverend Curry? Yeah, Curry. When yeah. he stood when he was giving his message. He kept looking back for a green. You know, that's a black preacher. Yeah, 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 he looked yeah. back behind him for hey, a green. You, you got my hate. back on this, yeah. right? Um, there was nothing there. It was straightforward. You just see how it's about to break. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, oh, that's it's, this is probably going to be the, la- the, the last time <laughs> we see that uncomfortable spirit in there, you know, and... It was breath. It was a, I'm sorry, a fresh breath of um, a breath, a breath of fresh air, right? To see that and to be witness to that, and that's why I got up, and I'm fighting it, and I'm drinking these coffees, and I want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but so, tell us what you saw in terms of attire. Who did you like? Oh, who, like who? who let's who, talk who about really? them all. Okay, huh? George Clooney's wife. Yes, yes, ma'am, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just had twins, ma'am. She did. Let, let me talk to you for a minute. Uh, <laughs> when she came in, it took my breath away. Mm-hmm. It did. And it's it's very rare that she doesn't. Um, she definitely took my breath away. Um, there was an actress, and I don't even know who she was. It was three actresses that came in together 
Um, and I believe they're British actresses, but I don't, I didn't, I was early. Right. But when you watch, if you, I watched it on BBC America. I told you I go hard. It was no CNN. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I watched it on BBC and it was, um, it was this one dress. I'm going to find it. What, what did you, th- what did you think about Serena? Serena's look. I like her character. <laughs> um, Y'all gonna leave Serena alone, man. Y'all no, gonna leave now Serena. let me tell you what I've been talking about. Serena is her hair. Her hair was on point. Mm-hmm. I loved her braids. Up, okay, I loved her braids. Maybe to the ponytail part. She lost. Me. I mean, I love the ponytail, but I, I'm not sure. Kira made me feel like I shouldn't like it, but. <laughs> But I was not feeling her look. You weren't feeling her look from the top to the bottom. Yeah. I, I, that necklace. Yeah. No ma'am. No ma'am. Um, couldn't do it. Let me see. Victoria Beckham always Man, impresses yeah, me. Yeah. Her and her and um, David. Hey, look, David. Look at you talking about. <laughs> um, who else? The well, the men. No, they all had the same stuff. I mean, yeah, you know. Now let's talk about the bride. Let's talk about. Let's Megan speak about the bride. Mark. So, we were. I was talking with Duchess. She, She's Duchess, a, yeah. her royal highness, her royal Duchess, highness, Duchess, absolutely. Um, Megan, it was absolutely stunning. And me and my creative director from Car Fast, Rashid, we mm-hmm. were talking about this via text this morning. And he was like, I kind of want her to have more jewels on her dress. I thought she was absolutely perfect. I yeah. thought the veil, I thought everything was perfect. Down to her makeup. And my cousin even missed, she's like, her nails are very simple and plain. Like, she didn't do extra at all. Mm-hmm. Like, at all. And I love that because it was such a representation of her character that she's presented um, in this walk with Harry, you know, going right. into the royal family, that right. they're all about simplicity and they're all about being genuine and organic. And it was just so refreshing to see that she toned it down, but just enough. Yeah. yeah just yeah. enough. It was so classy and I, I loved it. Oh, she's so Yeah, gorgeous. I mean, it, it, it was beautiful. It was, it was perfect. It was, it was absolutely perfect. Absolutely. It was simple. It was elegant. It was pristine. Mm-hmm. It was royal. It, it very much was. Um, you know, you knocked it out. You knocked it out the party. Listen, that that was Crystal Larice, our royal ro- correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> and back to you, Bob. Such an honor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, wow, this time it just goes by so fast. I, I think, you know, we typically go to, into hot topics and th- talking about these things, but I but I really just enjoy picking your brain and Aww. and and getting getting some of your wisdom and your experience. I do, however, Kira. Is there one particular one that you just want to want to really, really jump on? Because I, I I got one. Um. Well, well, well. I I want I want to I want to give our thoughts and our condolences and our prayers to everybody out in Santa Fe, yes, Texas. Yes. 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 Um, and and let's and, and like like a lot of people are echoing. Let's do pressure our politicians to do more than yes, thoughts, prayers, please. and condolences. Right. And push them. You know, it's to, actually it's like around. It early voting right now and the mm-hmm. vote and all that stuff like mm-hmm. we need to start going to those polls and those midterm elections mm-hmm. and even these elections these runoff elections and making sure we voice our opinion about who we want to represent us mm-hmm. for things like this because this tragedy should not continue this is the 22nd one this year this year 22nd this, one this year this it terrifies not, me being yeah, a mom exactly you know, we talked that, about on my radio show today I talked about it this morning I said you know we don't have school age children yet but soon they will be and so Kira before and I, we know it yeah you know? And, and Kira and I are entering into the conversation like okay so what are we gonna are we doing like you don't want to live in fear but then you also want to be wise as well you know what i'm saying because the safety of your children is the number one is your number one priority so it's one of those things is again i just want to you know offer up our condolences to everyone that's been affected uh, via gun violence with the 22nd incident uh, of 2018 it's scary man it really is i mean it's a lot that goes on with that i think I think even seeing how the students from, you know, Florida responded even with that, that, you know, they responded immediately like this is why we, we did. fought so hard. We fought yeah. so hard and we're going to continue to fight and we want a little bit more than what we keep seeing. We keep seeing the same thing over and over again. And when are y'all going to get it? I, you know, it bothers me even to have the conversation about here in Texas, we have open carry campus. And like the fact that y'all are allowing people to carry guns right. on campus, like, do you not? see the danger with they that. don't get it i'm I like it should not be a conversation about an open carry it should be a 
absolutely against the wall. Now, I know some schools have the option to not have open carry. Some businesses have the option. I'm like, but the fact that we even have to have the conversation. The conversation. The, com be the conversation shouldn't be in existence. We mm -hmm. should know that those dang guns are dangerous. I don't care if you say people shoot people. We get that. I, I I, but I don't that like either. that argument because mm -hmm. I'm like, it's the fact that they have access to it is the problem. Yeah. So, I, you know, I just want us to really push for uh, more people showing support of reform gun reform we need more people for gun reform you know gun i put reform. on my instagram um go ahead and follow me at senior wapo 713 i put on my instagram oh, plug. <laughs> that you know i am in support i'm 100 percent in, in support of the second amendment as well as gun reform i think it's okay the two can coexist because yeah, yeah, co we're can not have hunting and gathering just, right now yeah you can right. have your pistol just go through the the red tape like there's more regulations placed on driver's licenses than, than there are Oh for, yeah, for for, for, for gun, like I have to, and yeah, I gotta do a driving sight a test. missile. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Like, Deadly I'm, missile. Yeah, all of these, and so it's yeah, it's, right. it's one of those driving things that it. it's very very difficult. Um, and it's, it affects us all. It affects us all. It so does. shout out to Santa Fe High School. We're praying for you here, Society Now, the Sphere TV, and uh, we you know we with you. And and they're right, they're just, just south of Pasadena, which is 30 minutes south of here, yeah. of Houston. It's, yeah. it's a suburb of Houston. It's round the corner, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. It sucks. Yeah. It I, sucks. I really have no words for that. I just really, it's kind of terrifying, actually, yeah. when you think about it, because it's too close to home. Yeah. It's never going to be far away, no matter where you are. It's never no, far away. Even never. if it was a thousand miles, it's still too yeah, close to home. Yeah, because it's kids. It's kids. Mm -hmm. It's kids. Too close. Well, I mean, I, you know, so many things I wanted to tackle, but I'd rather have had the conversation because we don't have the opportunity to have our own royal in the building. Listen. So when we have our own royal, we our dedicate all of our time to the royal. Go ahead. Don't, don't smash it too much. Now. She said, don't smash it. Just got this done. <laughs> But we wanted to give the time to our royal, and we just thank you guys for tuning in to the special edition to Society Now. My name again is Kira Laws. You can follow me on Instagram at the Modern Day Cindy, and I'm going to do better with posting because I, I did I did a little Insta story, so I want to continue doing Insta stories. My pictures, y'all. Shout you know, out so to you for that Insta story. Insta cool story. Insta story. Yeah. Hey, thank you. I what love I, you. I, Look. <laughs> Insta story. I mean, and I'm gonna do more. I just you know, it's just I have to get my people together. I'm getting more getting my people together. Absolutely. You do need people. You got people. You have to have people. You to gotta have. People. Keep you honest. <laughs> Listen, make sure you holler at your boy again at Senior Wapo 713 on all social media outlets. www.seniorwapo713.com. New content on the way. You can also catch me on the sphere.tv on my other pod podcast called Jesus for Gentlemen, where we, we celebrate gentlemanly style and culture from the perspective of what it's like to be a gentleman and a Renaissance man in 2018. So we'll see you there as well. Till next time.